Hi everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Universe here, another episode of Magic Jewels. So for today's episode, we are back with the Mardu Control Deck. So this is quite a nice opening hand, got basically all three colours that I need. So I've got white from the Evolving Wilds, double black and a red source. So uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty good here. So for game number one, we're playing the rank 28 Fresh Macress. So he's mulliganed down to six cards, so you have to mulligan down a couple of times there. He's got a Molten Vortex, interesting, uh... I was interested to see Molten Vortex. I know I did my kind of my my land gimmick deck. Uh, was it Battle for Zendikar season I did that? Or Origins? I can't remember. But I did a bit of a gimmicky one with lots of land and stuff like that, and Molten Vortex was one of them. But uh, yeah, it's usually, uh, usually a lot more in like aggressive decks, I suppose. So we may just pop that now, grab ourselves the white source. So we need a sweeper sooner rather than later. It's just, it, okay, it looks like we're not playing an aggressive deck. I was like, oh, I wonder if we're playing some kind of aggro-ish deck, but it looks like we are not. So I'm just going to play out the uh, swamp so that we can play out the smoldering marsh untapped next time. It's also tempting to maybe anguish and make the uh, molten vortex. Okay, okay, we've got some white splashed in here, so we might be looking at more of a boros deck. So we've got Relic Seeker, so 2-2 two, two Renowned, and when it's Renowned, he gets to search up for an artifact. So that's probably just going to get Fiery Impulse, I think. So we just drop the Smoldering Marsh. Yeah, it's Fiery Impulse, you straight away. I don't think I don't think there's anything you can do to save that. I think it's just... Yeah, I, I, I didn't think there was anything he could have done there, but... Uh, you never know. Could have had a, some kind of pump... Is there a red pump spell? I suppose there's... Um, Titan Strength, if that, would, if that would be worthwhile. But we will probably be dropping just the Evolving Wilds this turn. What has he got? He's got absolutely nothing, so that does leave us open an Anguished and Making, or we also have a Grasp of Darkness, which is quite nice. So this I'm going to get the double red from, so we can think about Exquisite Firecrafting and Chandra in when we draw two more mana. So we might as well just mana fix the, uh, the red source. Okay, so we've got an always watching, so I'm almost tempted just to anguish and make that now. Just because I... It just needs to go, basically. Any any creatures with that are just pretty much unstoppable. So we want to we wanna just get rid of that right now. Looks like he's got nothing else there, so we just got rid of the always watching. Don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we're probably just going to read the bones this turn. And we shall grab the Fiery Impulse. I'm not that bothered by Copter Thed. Um, Obnixilis is quite a nice card to have, though. Uh, so if we get one more mana, we can obviously use it to, like, kill creatures, draw cards, all that fun stuff. We do have the Fiery Impulse open, thanks to uh, leaving that one red source open to kind of take something down, such as the Gaia Reach Bandit. I want to see if he plays out anything else first before we commit to the Fiery Impulse. So, so that has got haste. I mean, I'm just going to remove it straight away before it can uh, smack us in the face. Kind of a half rhyme there, haste and face. And he's also got himself a weapons trainer. It's plus one zero as long as you have an artifact, so probably just grasp of darkness you to be fair. Uh, so we've got nothing at the moment, so yeah, I think we just kind of roll on to our next time. We do have Nahiri to play, but uh, don't really need to play her out yet. So I want to see what he does here. If he plays out an artifact, I'm just going to grasp of darkness the weapons trainer. Okay, so we've got Coon Firebird, so that's something we probably want to grasp of darkness, or do we declare that in stone next turn? Now, I think we declare that in stone just because it's got the ability to come back. So I'd rather just kill the uh, weapons trainer. We're gonna take we we're gonna take three damage regardless. So I'd rather kind of kill the one which can't really come back and then declare in stone on this turn. Uh, we did have the radiant flames, but yeah, I think I'm just gonna declare you in stone. I mean, we could have Nahiri there, actually, destroyed it, but it's all right. So at this point, we're just kind of trying to control the board still. Just giving the extra card draw, but we've got the ability to kind of take down things. Could do with maybe destroying that Molten Vortex at some point. Maybe dropping Nahiri and... Let's see what he does. Okay, so we've got the Expedition Envoy... Any second creatures? Nope. So I'm wondering what's the best way to deal with that. I could just Radiant Flames it. Um, seems like a bit of a waste to do that. Uh, or do I just drop Nahiri, hope he swings at it, and then, you know, 
So I'm going to plus two Nahiri here. Now I'm almost tempted to throw away something here, such as the planar outburst. It's not really getting much mileage at the moment. So, ah, that's what I'm looking for. Fifth mana. That was actually worth it. So, excellent. So what's he going to do? So he's going to Molten Vortex, I'm guessing Nahiri. So is that they're just two mana in hand, maybe? No, he's going to Molten Vortex my face. So we do have the Linvala to kind of give us five health back once we get a sixth mana, which is quite nice. Okay, we have a Bone Saw here. Which gives a creature plus one zero. So he's going to be able to put, jam that on Expedition Envoy. I'm assuming we may take three damage, possibly to the face, actually. Oh, yep, he's going to jam it at my face. Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. So we possibly want to kill you and also destroy you. Just wondering what he's got in hand. If that's another mana, I kind of really want to destroy Molten Vortex. Okay, so we're going to exile you. Uh, we are also going to... Yeah, let's just grasp of darkness you. And that's all we're doing for the turn. So I don't know what he might have in hand. I don't think there's anything that can smack me down for seven. So we could really do with a sick man to get Limvala down to make me feel a little bit safer. Um, so let's just plus two you. Do we throw something away? I'm going to throw away the Radiant Flames. It's not really getting much mileage here. Um, still not really getting much mileage. Uh, we've got a Chandra's Ignition, which is uh, not great. Don't really want to play Ob, just because I'm worried that plus oneing him uh, will obviously put me in quite a dangerous position. If I had, if I could put Linvala down, I'd feel a little bit more confident. Yeah, actually, that's six mana ready to get Linvala down. Okay, so he's got a Breakneck Rider. Want to see what else he does before we uh, fiery impulse it? Yep, we can fiery impulse it for three. So he's going to bone saw it. Eh, why not? Let's just fiery impulse it now. So that does nothing. Come on, we need that six mana. Show daddy the mana. Come on. There we go. Although it doesn't really do us much good this turn. This is plus two. Uh, yeah, I don't think we'll toss away anything this turn. So, yeah, we're just going to finish up there. Make him think that we've got some kind of removal open, which we don't, but he doesn't need to know that. So, yeah, we definitely want Limvala down next turn. I don't know what else he's got up his sleeve. Okay, we've got an Anointer of Champions. I'd almost like if you played out another creature, just because that way we could actually then get the 5-5 five, five, and the 3-3. Three, three. Plus the bonus health would be quite nice. Doesn't always work out that way, but it would be nice. So he's putting Bone Sword on Anointer of Champions. Does that give it haste? No, it does not. I was like, why does he keep attaching it like now? There's, well, there's not really much point, but... Uh, Okay, so yeah, we will be playing Limvala down this turn just to play it a little bit safer. There we go. So we will get that five health back. And then we cannot destroy. Oh, yes, it has to be a tapped artifact, doesn't it? So let's just plus two Nahiri again. And he's just outright left the game. Okay, so uh, yeah, that, I don't really understand why he decided to quit there, but I'll take that win. So let's move on to game number two. Okay, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, I think we're playing the rank 29 Joy Asley. I think that was. Wow, that is a trash tier opening hand. That one is a lot better. So we'll probably go for the Evolving Wilds turn one, grab a red source for the Fiery Impulse, and then just start dropping our dual lands after that. Maybe go for the Isolated Chapel first, just because it's the only one that won't come in tapped with a with a game. Let me pause, please. With a mountain on the field. That's what I was trying to say. There we go. 
So we do have the anguish on making uh, for any big creatures. Okay, never mind. So we're just going to drop the planes this turn instead, which means we can actually play all of these on tap now. So I'm actually completely all set for mana. I don't want to draw into any more now would be quite nice. Yeah, we're playing uh, Joy Asley for game number one. So what have we got here then? A Mold Grass Scavenger. Okay, so it's a 0, 4, but gets plus 3. Zero if it's uh, when delirium is triggered, so we don't really have to worry about that quite yet. So let's play out the isolated chapel, gives us the option to anguish unmake as well, in case anything else terrifying comes down. Oh yeah, so uh, the reason my rank has dropped a little bit back down to 33 is I've been playtesting some decks for the this week's Friday Night Magic, so. Um, I've kind of settled on doing the reanimator deck that we've we've seen around a couple of times. That one which basically has like has is only blue and black but does actually run Guy's Revenge. Okay, so at the moment we're basically just not doing anything. He's not doing anything because he's got two zero fours. I do have the planar outburst to come down next turn in case he plays a lot more creatures. Okay, we've got a tireless tracker. So planar outburst might almost be a good idea. Just because, you know, he's got a Fair amount on the board now. We do have another board sweep in the Chandra's Ignition and other such goodies as well. Okay, actually, scratch that. We are just going to Grasp of Darkness. Oh, we can just Fire Impulse it, actually. Why don't we think of that sooner? Let's just Fire Impulse you down. I mean, these, these aren't doing anything right now. I mean, they're still three different cards away from being able to trigger Delirium, so I don't really have to worry about uh, sweeping the board quite yet. So I'm not really entirely sure what this deck is doing with the Moldgraf Scavengers. It doesn't seem like a pure Delirium deck, which is odd. One of our big creatures? No, we do have a uh, Ravaging Blaze, which won't yet trigger its spell mastery, so uh, that's a thing. So at the moment we're just sitting back, so I'm guessing he's going to trigger the clue. Draw himself a card. So yeah, at the moment we're just kind of like controlling the board a little bit, not not being too hasty. We don't really want to like rush into planar outburst or anything like that if we don't have to. Okay, so he has played a gargoyle, which does actually count as an artifact, I believe. So yeah, let's just let's just uh, grasp of darkness. You I actually found out the other day that grasp of darkness is actually a reprint from a uh, from a set quite a while ago. So uh, yeah, does that count? Yeah, does that does now count as two different card types? So we will have the uh, planar outburst on them eventually. Oh, here we go. We now have one of our win cons. So we've got Chandra. Cool. So uh, pff, this won't really do anything, but it's worth just you know plus one or anyway. So we're just gonna swing for swing for six. Won't do anything. He'll just block both of them. Which is, you know, what, what you'd expect. But no, this gets you, this is one of our win cons. So we've got you down. We've also got the potential to, like, Chandra's Ignition, Planar Outburst, all sorts of fun stuff. So that's pretty cool. We can sweep the board for both of these if we need to. Okay, we've got a Thraben Gargoyle. So if he plays anything else out, I'm almost tempted to Planar Outburst here just so we can start swinging for six every turn. How many of these does he get? He gets four altogether, so... Haha, uh... <laughs> we've also got Gideon. Fantastic. So I'm really tempted to just play in our outburst here. Yeah, let's just let's just sweep the board. We can get Gideon down next turn. Start dropping his, his tokens as well. So what's he got here then? Expose evil. So tap up to two target creatures. Okay, so, you know, that's fine by me. I'll accept that. I'm guessing he's gonna, yeah, pop the clue as well, get himself that extra card. So Gideon's something I definitely want to get down next turn, just because uh, he's he's a great target for Chandra's Ignition. So what I can like potentially do on one turn is plus one Gideon, turn him into a 5-5 five, five human, Chandra's Ignite him to wipe away whatever he's got on the board, then deploy Chandra's tokens after that and then swing for, you know, quite a bit of damage that turn. So yeah, we definitely want to get Gideon down this turn. Okay, what have we got here then? Paranoid Parish Blade. Gets plus one, zero, uh, and first, has first strike as long as there are more than... So basically, he gets plus one, zero, and um, first strike with Delirium in play. Okay, so... 
can I play out? Hmm. I'm almost tempted to just like remove you. So yeah, let's, let's plus one Chandra first. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. So we as well swing with these two. As much as I'd like to get Gideon down this turn, it's not the end of the world. So he's just going to let that go through. So do I Anguish and make that? Or do I Chandra's Ignite? Ooh, I could Chandra's Ignite to be fair. Would push through three more damage and wipe that away. Because I can't really do anything else. So if I play Gideon out, no, that basically means that one of these two would take um, three. Oh, no, it wouldn't actually, because I can then just deploy the token. That also works for me. So unless he's got some way of removing the token, um, we do have a blocker for this um, Paranoid Parish Blade. If not, one of these is just going to take three damage, basically. I mean, he could trigger the Delirium somehow. Don't see how, though. Is a human? Yeah, it is a human. Uh, that That is one way of doing it. So you can just declare in stone my uh, my token. So one of these is going to... Well, Gideon's probably going to die. So let's just uh, pop you. Then we'll grab a red source. No, it's uh, black source. Why not? So that was a risk. It was calculated risk. He, did, he didn't have any way of like, dealing with that token. But, you know, I feel as though... It was reasonably justified. We have ways of dealing with uh, with you now. So, yep, more mana is always good for me. So we'll deploy the token, swing for six. Like so. So this drops him down to eight. Now, how much damage would I push through Ravaging Blaze? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm going to do Ravaging Blaze now. Reason being is that uh, I should just be able to chance ignite one of these tokens next turn. Or just swing with the tokens. Uh, yeah, and there we go. So he's just decided that he doesn't have anything there. So uh, let's move on to game number three. Okay guys, here we are for the third and probably final game of today. I believe that we're playing the rank 40 Sorol, something like that. Uh, this is a really nice opening hand actually, so probably going to keep it. We've got all the mana we need to play out all the cards in hand as of when, so probably start off with the Clifftop Retreat, just so it gives us the option to play out the Fiery Impulse on turn two. Then probably drop the Shambling Vent and then just start dropping our Swamps after that, so working up towards Gideon. So Vanquish and making turn three, no not really. That work turn three maybe yeah could I could do anguish for making turn three okay so we've got double cliff top retreat so we'd obviously like to find maybe like a plains or a mountain later on to actually play that untapped okay so we've got white and green so my assumption was gonna be white green humans but my assumption has immediately flipped to uh super friends as he has played out the oath of nissa so he's obviously searching the top three cards and he has found a rogue's passage So yeah, I think this turn we shall play out the Shambling Vent. We'll save open the Smouldering Marsh uh, for when we have the Drop the Swamps later on. Okay, so okay, he's got Nissa, so Nissa is about to die. He will, he obviously will still get the Mana Fetch, but we're just going to kill the creature before it gets any bigger. Sorry, Nissa. That's why, you shouldn't really, that's why you should really try and avoid playing Nissa this early on because obviously it's, she's very, very vulnerable to um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, removal like that. So we're going to drop the Evolving Wilds this turn. Search up for a either a plains or a mountain. I'm probably going to go for the plains just because that will then give us a, like an additional white source. Okay, so we've got himself a Tireless Tracker down. So let's just pop you, get ourselves that plains. Don't know what he's going to do here, so he's evolving wildsing. So he does get two clues because of that. So yeah, let's grab ourselves a planes. Might be maybe slightly better, but we I'm thinking of exiling that tireless tracker with the anguish they're making. Just because I don't really want it getting any bigger. 
Um, yeah, we won't, be, we won't play out Gideon this turn. We've drawn a lot of mana, which has not been particularly good for us. I want to see what he does with that first. I want to see if he sacrifices the clues and then tries to swing, in which case we'll then just anguish to make it and he won't be able to do anything else this turn. Okay, so he's played out Nahiri, so that's something that we possibly want to anguish and make instead. So let's just anguish to make you now. I did want to do it to that one, but uh, he's not being he's not able to pump it up this turn, so I'm not too fussed by that. So I'm assuming we might be playing some kind of clue synergy with I don't know. I don't know what this deck's doing. It's a bit of a mishmash at the moment. So we could do some way of removing you. You know, it would be nice if uh Ooh, we do have a Chandra's Ignition, so that's pretty cool. Let's play out the other Swamp. We'll also play out Gideon. And then just plus, plus zero him. Grab that token. So next turn, I'm probably looking at maybe Chandra's Igniting on top of Gideon to wipe away the Tireless Tracker. Even if he can sacrifice, like, three or four of the clues, we should still be able to kill it in that regard. So it's going to go up to a 3-3. Three, three. It's obviously now out of reach of our Knight ally. That's fine. Obviously gets to draw a card as well. I'm guessing he's going to try and swing at Gideon. Yep. So we're going to block it. Come on. There we go. So yeah, he can only sacrifice one more clue. So he's got Devouring Flames. Five damage. To oh, great. So he's just going to kill my Gideon. Fantastic. <laughs> Was not expecting that. Okay, so now we've got no way of killing the Tireless Tracker, which is not particularly good. Or do we? Uh, let me just add this up. So how much have we got here? So we've got one, one, two, three, four. Okay, yep, that worked for me. Goodbye, Tireless Tracker. Push through four damage as well. That kind of needed to be done, like ASAP, before he started putting more clues on top of it. You could do the really big creature to drop the Chandra's Ignition on top of, I'm going to be honest. So he's drawing some cards with the clue. See, so yeah, I, I want some... I, I don't know what I want here. I want something. Chandra would work for me. I'd be quite happy with the Chandra right now. So he's popping more clues, so he's got nothing that he can really play at the moment, which is good for us, as it just means that he's kind of stalled a little bit out. Good break. Linvala would work quite well for me. Uh, Fiery Impulse is pretty much hot trash at this point. I mean, it does three damage, but that's about all it does. I could have, oh, I could have swung a Shambling vent there, I just realised, so... Uh, maybe to hold it open as a blocker, potentially. Do have another Shambling vent, so if I lose that one, wouldn't be the end of the world. How much mana we got? Seven? So yeah, even if we were to lose the Shambling vent, I'd still be happy with the amount of mana we had. I don't know what this guy's doing. He's obviously played out a lot of creatures, so... Uh, so he's played out the Rex Age. So there's nothing he can destroy there. Do you want to see what else he plays out here? Or is that it? Come on, game. There we go. I'm just going to kill you, because why not? Oh, wow. Yeah, let's just get more mana. So let's let's deploy you. So, yeah, we should be able to swing for two here with the Shambling Vent. So at least that trades us uh, the other way. So now we're at least ahead in the game, finally. You know, 16 to 14. Oh, we got Omnath. That is not good. That is not good at all. That is one card I did not want to see. Could really do with something to get rid of that, ideally, then. Um, can we deploy one of these? No, that doesn't really work, because unfortunately... I'm just thinking here, because I, I can't actually kill it. That is a really, really good play for me. I don't see any way of me actually being, a, being able to deal with this. Because if we were to like block one of our Shambling Vents with the uh, 
elemental rather than omnath it wouldn't actually work so fortunately i think we're a little bit screwed at this point i mean we could block it this turn with the shambling vent and energy square well, that, that won't work either because that's a sorcery rather than uh And he's got Arlen Cord, so unfortunately it looks like it's probably going to be a loss just because of the really, really clutch um, Omnath from him there. We're just not, we've, all we've really drawn is mana, you know, we've not drawn any of our uh, Planeswalkers, any of our draw, any of our sweepers. I mean, even at this point, I would quite happily accept. Um, what's what I'm looking for? Okay, so yeah, we're probably dead at this point. I think even with uh, a, a Planar Cleansing, I think we'd be a little bit screwed. So I think we're going to have to block one of these. So go block the 7-7. Seven, seven. Unless you can give it trample, I suppose. Uh yeah, I don't think you can give it trample there. Sorry, I was checking my phone. I thought I felt a message come in, but apparently I did not. I'm imagining things. So yeah, I don't see any way for us to get out of this. Uh Radiant Flames does not help. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a concede. Like I said, I can't see any way for us to win this here. So, uh, unfortunately, that is a GG. So, uh, never mind. Bit of a bad way to end it off, but we had a couple of good matches to begin with. Just kind of got uh, stumped by the uh, Omnath at the end there. But, uh, yeah, that is the end of the episode for now. Like I said earlier on, I will be playing with a reanimator deck later on in the week. Pretty fun to play. Not the most consistent deck, or, or it's just me kind of still learning the ropes with it. But uh, hopefully we can have some good matches with it. But uh, yeah, I'll leave it here for now. As always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.